another one? No, I'm no, I'm quite some way. I'm 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 south of the border. I went to university in Scotland. All right. Um, okay. But uh, I'm south of the border at this exact moment. Good thank problem. you. Thank you. Um, I, I I can't speak for too long, but thank you very much for spending some of your time. I'm curious about the faithful and discreet slave yeah. in chapter fifty-four of your book, Enjoy Life Forever, which I mentioned on my email. My my yep. text my text message. Um, yep. I've got I've got it in front of me. I've got the chapter open. Um, so you, you've been reading through the, the first paragraph there. Jesus is the head of the Christian congregation. Have you got the book in front of you? Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. It said today, from his position in heaven, Jesus directs his followers on earth by means of a faithful and discreet slave, and. It, it takes us to Matthew twenty four forty five. Yes. Um, having received an appointment from Jesus himself, the slave would have certain amount of authority, but would remain a slave of Christ and serve Christ's brothers. So the question that poses is, who is that slave, and how does the slave care for us? So you, you, are you quite happy with what's said there? Well, I think that Jesus was answering a question about the destruction of the temple and the end of the age at his return, the disciples yeah. mistakenly thought that the events would be synonymous. It was going to happen then, yeah. But they're not. Um, the temple was destroyed in AD 70. The second coming of Christ hasn't happened yet. Um, Jesus okay. then warns people to pay attention. Don't be asleep. Be awake. Be waiting for these things to, to, to come about when they do happen. So when you come to Matthew twenty four forty five, it, it's uh, surely, wouldn't it be a, a, a little parable which contrasts people who are not attentive, who haven't stayed awake waiting for the master's return, which he's just been telling them about in the previous 30 verses. And it's a contrast between verse 25, the faithful servant, and verse 48, I think it is, the unfaithful servant. Yeah, right. verse 48. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. Um, and he then goes on in the next chapter to give the parable of the foolish and the wise virgins and the parable of the talents. And this is all about the, the same thing. It's about taking heed to what Jesus has said at the start of Matthew 24, I, I don't think Jesus's hearers would have automatically thought when they heard him uh, talk about the parable of the faithful and wise servant and the, the evil servant. I don't think they would have thought, oh, Jesus is talking about a group of old men who are going to sit around a table in New York State in 2000 years time. Yes. You don't think that really applies today? Um, <laughs> you think that's a significant question that Christians need to answer? No. Or need to come to no, a no. conclusion on? No, no. It's a contrast between a faithful servant okay. in verse 45 and an evil servant in verse 48. And the difference is okay. that the wise servant, the faithful servant, is preparing for his master's coming his, his master's return this is what jesus has been talking about at the start of matthew 24 for 30 36 verses he's been talking about the destruction of the temple and the sign of the destruction of the temple and the end of the age which will be synonymous with his second coming and the sign of the end of the age and he's saying be attentive be be christians who are waiting for these things to happen and okay. be attentive, be about your master's business. Don't be an evil, lazy servant. Be a faithful servant, a wise servant, who's waiting for these things to happen. Then in Matthew 25, he gives us the parable of the wise and foolish virgins, which is exactly the same thing repeated. Pay attention, be waiting for your master's return. Yeah, be and then the parable of the talents, right? Okay. And then so the parable you, of the talents... This has got you nothing. Don't think that's really asking who, um, who would be being used by Christ on earth today. You don't think 
that's what it's talking about. I don't think it's got any relevance to the year 2022 and old men okay. living in New York State. Okay. I mean... <laughs> so your question about um, um, understanding... What, what um, I think you... Understanding, you know, the prophecy... Um, year 1919. Um, yes. Th- th- this is a, th- th- this culminates in the end of a time of cleansing and sifting, um, and sees the appointment of the face of the saints leave. You. So that's not really a question. Well, you claim that a faithful and wise servant, which is a body of men or leaders of a religious group were appointed in the year 1919. Have I, have I got that right? Well, there was many at that time from the late 1880s who were very aware of Christ's return. And um, the, the, the scriptures allude to that salvation. But who would be appointed? Who would who would care for the master's belongings on earth at that, at that time. So to understand that, we need to go to um, references in Revelation chapter 11 and also yes. Malachi 3. Do you want to go to Revelation 11? Because I'm curious as to how this 1919 date is calculated. Thank you. But, but you say, Robert, would you say that you're searching for the truth? Oh, yes, yes. You are? Yes. Because that's, um, I suppose that has to be the most important question, isn't it? I'm sure yes. you agree. Well, I've taken the trouble to read part of your book. I haven't read the whole book, yeah. but I've read parts of the book. Yeah. Yeah, Re- Revelation 11. Um, it begins there with um, a description of measuring the temple sanctuary of God. And there was worship in it. Now, this is not speaking about a, the physical temple, it's speaking about the arrangement for worshipping God on the basis of Christ's sacrifice. Christ, as we know, has already taken his place in heaven. Sorry, what so are you talking about? Temple. Sorry, I don't understand. What are you talking about? So I'm talking about way that we worship God and that the arrangements that's been put in place are arrangements that come from Jesus Christ as in his role as head of the congregation. So the spiritual temple arrangement is an arrangement that's in place in heaven because I'm sure you'd agree that those who are going to rule with Christ will be united with him in heaven. So it's a spiritual temple. Understanding? Are you recognising any of that? Um, I'm I'm curious as to how you calculate the 1919 date. Yeah, well, that, that's what, what I'm trying to do. That's yes. the, that's the setting for Revelation 11. Revelation 11, verse, two, verse one. one. Yes, I've been I've been following it. Yeah, verse two, verse one. But as for the courtyard that is outside the temple sanctuary, leave it out and do not measure it, because it is given to the nations, and they will trample the holy city underfoot for 42 months. So the arrangement for worshipping Almighty God on the basis of Christ's sacrifice, he is established as the King of the Kingdom and is now ruling from heaven. So, and, and his rule is not just rulership, but it's also spiritual in nature. He's interested in our, not just our physical existence, but also our our spiritual comprehension. So that spiritual temple of which he is head rules from heaven, but it extends to the earth. We refer to ourselves as being as living in the, the earthly courtyard of God's spiritual temple. So all those who have faith in Christ, faith in his role as the head of the congregation, that we are worshipping God acceptably in the spiritual temple but in the earthly courtyard of it. We're not but, but, it says, but it says do not measure the courtyard. Yes, 
It says measure the temple. The word for temple there is naos. 3,485 in Strong's Concordance. And it refers to the Holy of Holies. Naos yeah. can't refer to anything on this earth. It, it has to refer to the Holy of Holies. So it has to have a heavenly heavenly meaning. And it says yeah. in Re Revelation 11.2, but leave out the, the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it. So if you think you're in the courtyard, you're not going to be measured. Well, uh, it's a bit of a silly question because obviously Christ has always had faithful Christians living on earth, hasn't he? Since his yeah, death, burial yeah. and resurrection, there have always been a remnant. There has always been a small group of people who are faithful to him here on earth. How, how, do, you, how do you get from 1914 to 1919? Thank, thank you. Um, you mean like the claim that the Pope is the Archangel Michael? That was that no. was taught in the Finnish Mystery. Um, I've got a copy of the Finnish Mystery. I bought it from a book yeah. dealer. And the Finnish Mystery says that the Pope is the Archangel Michael. Uh, yeah. That's, I think it's page 188. I can try and find out for you. So I get you seem to be putting a lot of emphasis into uh, studying things to reject it. No, 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 no. This is this is what they taught as the truth at the time. They they taught that the Pope was the Archangel Michael. Okay. Um, so, is this, do you want to talk about that, or do you want to talk about um, well, the understanding that they 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 taught that the Pope was the Archangel Michael. It is page one eight eight of the Finnish Mystery, also known as Studies in the, in the Scripture, Volume Seven. Um, they taught that for many years after nineteen nineteen. So. Why didn't Jesus recognise and then cleanse that from the society, if it's... Well, it was. It was cleansed. That's, that's not a current teaching. And not today, not in the, the year the 2022. Like I, 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 speaks about the light getting brighter as the day gets firmly established. It's the path of the so righteous. We do, we're, not, we're not saying that, uh, that it's infallible what's been said in the past. So um, one thing that's infallible, they, that's yeah, the finished mystery was published in 1917. You claim that Jesus did an inspection and a cleansing work between 1914 and 1917. So this book, the finished mystery, was published slap bang in the centre yeah. of yeah. of this inspection work. And the inspection you say was finished in 1919, right? Well, what was taught in the Finnish Mystery was taught as truth for many years after 1919. And the Finnish Mystery teaches on page 188 that the Pope is the Archangel Michael. And on page 5 of the 1917 edition, this, this was changed in later editions and taken out. But in the 1917 first edition that I've got, they taught that Pastor Russell was the faithful and discreet slave. Right, but why didn't Jesus cleanse those two errors from the Watchtower Society? Well, aren't you being that's, critical? That's you, you, aren't you critical of other religious groups?
But but don't you clear I claim? Can't that to ourselves. We're not judging anyone else. Well, of course you are, because you claim that all other religions are of the oh, devil. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the conversation because I don't think you're really searching. If you want help, well, I'm you searching. Want to I, I'm searching to obey God. Yes, but that's probably not yeah. good enough for you. You want me to obey eight men in New York. No, eight no, elderly men in New York who call themselves That's the faithful and discreet slave, who who are basically this is a self appointed title. It's something they've given to themselves, just as the Mormon leaders okay. give themselves okay. authority, yeah, and I'm the Seventh Day Adventist leaders give themselves yeah. authority. Right. So you your governing body have given themselves authority. They don't have any authority are you from God at all. Over me? Are you listening to me? Go on. I'm saying, let's just leave it there. Bye-bye.